Welcome to this part of gate solved problems. The first problem is taken from gate 2010 paper and in this problem we need to match the logic gates in column A with their equivalence in column B. So we have two columns, column A and column B and we need to match the logic gates in column A with their equivalence in column B. All the eight gates are two input gates. All the gates are two input gates and let's say the two inputs are A and B. We will start with column A. The first gate is NOR gate and the two inputs are A and B. So the output is simply A or B and its whole complement. When you simplify this using de Morgan's law, you will have A complement and B complement. Now we will move to this gate and the second gate is NAND gate, the two inputs are A, B, output is A and B, it's complement. Using de Morgan's law we have A complement or B complement. The third gate is XOR gate, A, B are the two inputs, output is A and B complement or A complement and B. The last gate in column A is XNOR gate, XNOR gate with A and B as the two inputs. Output is simply A and B or A complement and B complement. So these are the outputs for gates in column A. Now we will move to column B. In the first gate we have one bubble here. Bubble denotes the complement operation. The two inputs are A and B. As there is one bubble, B is complemented and then given to this XOR gate. This is XOR gate and the output is A and B complement then it's complement or A complement and B complement simplifying this we have A and B or A complement and B complement this is the output for the first gate in column B now we will move to second gate we have two bubbles here so both A and B are complemented and the gate is or gate so we have A complement or B complement the third gate is XNOR gate, XNOR gate with one bubble here. So A is complemented and B is not complemented. So we have A complement and B or A complement, its complement and B complement. Simplifying this, we have A complement and B or A and B complement. This is the output for the third gate in column B. For the last gate, we have AND gate we have AND gate with two bubbles both the inputs are complemented so the output is simply A complement and B complement now we have the outputs for all the eight gates the next thing is to match them if you see P you will find it is matching with 4 because in both the cases output is A complement and B complement so P is matching P is matching with 4 Q is matching with 2 we have output A complement or B complement in both the cases. So Q is matching with 2. R is matching with 3 because we have same outputs. So R is matching with 3 and S is matching with 1. So this is how you have to solve this problem. I will write this down. P is matching with 4. Q is matching with 2. R is matching with 3 and S is matching with 1. This is the answer. Now we will try to choose the correct option. You will find option D is the correct option. So this is all for this problem. Now we will move to the second problem in this part and the second problem is also taken from the gate 2010 paper. First I will read the problem then we will solve it. For the output F to be 1 in the logic circuit shown the input combination should be we have three inputs A, B and C and the output is equal to F and we want F to be 1 and for this we have to calculate the values for A, B and C. This F should be 1 and we have to find out values of A, B and C so that F is equal to 1. First thing we have to do is to find out the expression for F. We have three gates. First gate is XOR gate. Second gate is XNOR gate and the last gate is 3 input XNOR gate. 
first we will find out output of this XOR gate and we have a XOR B as the output output of the XNOR gate is a XNOR B and the output of the three input XNOR gate F is equal to a XOR B XNOR a XNOR B XNOR C because C is the third input this is very important problem this is very important problem and uh, this is also a very interesting problem let's see how we can solve it first I will try to explain the common mistake that we can do in this problem we want F to be 1 and uh, let's say this is X this is Y and this is Z so we have three input XNOR gate we have three input XNOR gate and uh, we can draw the truth table for three input XNOR gate and uh, we can see for what values of X Y and Z the output is 1 and uh, then by using those values we can evaluate the values of A B and C for example for example when X is 1 Y is 1 and Z is also equal to 1 the output is going to be 1 so we can have A X or B equals to 1 a x nor b equals to 1 and c is equal to 1 by using this we can solve this but there are other possibilities also for example when x is 0 y is 0 and z is 1 the output is 1 so we have other possibilities also so this approach is very time consuming but we can use this method when we have and operator and operator instead of x nor if we have AND operator instead of XNOR we can easily use this method we only have one condition and by using this condition we can evaluate A, B and C now I will show you how to solve this problem what is the correct way we have two input XOR gate and two input XNOR gate and for two variables for two variables XOR, XOR is the complement of XNOR this is something we have already covered in logic gates chapter I will revise it for even for even variables XOR is complement of XNOR and for odd for odd variables XOR is equal to XNOR XOR is equal to XNOR in this case we have two input XOR gate and two input XNOR gate so XOR is equal to the complement of XNOR or I can write A XOR B is equal to complement of A XNOR B and if you see the expression for F you will find we have A XOR B XNOR A XNOR B so first I will try to evaluate the value for this A XOR B XNOR A XNOR B I will try to evaluate the value by using this property and let's say A XOR B is equal to X A XOR B is equal to X so by using this property A XNOR B is equal to X complement very simple so we have X XNOR X complement I will try to solve this by using the expansion of XNOR operation we have X and x complement or x complement and x complement and its complement x and x complement or x complement and x x and x complement is equal to 0 x complement and x is also equal to 0 so we have 0 as the value of a x or b x nor a x nor b so I will replace I will replace this part of the expression with 0 so we have we have 0 x nor c because here we have c so we have 0 x nor c and I will again use the expansion of x nor operation this will give me 0 and c or 0 complement and c complement 0 or c is equal to 0 0 complement is 1 so we have 1 and c complement I can write this as c complement and we want f to be 1 so this c complement should be 1 and this implies this implies C is equal to 0 so C is equal to 0 and if you see the four options you will find for option A for option B and for option C C is equal to 0 and for option D C is not equal to 0 
So option A, B and C are the correct options for this problem. This is very good problem. Use the property of XOR gate and you can easily solve this problem. If you have doubt, you can ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.